Hey guys, this is me Rajit Jain and welcome to yet another video. Today I will be talking about all you need to know to crack coding interviews. I'll be talking about what exactly is the story behind hiring and uh, the most important thing is people don't realize the story is very very important. You should know what how hiring works and what you should need to do to get, be successful in getting the job that you want. So um I came through my blog um I was just going through my blogs and I was baffled to see I have written a well compiled version of um, all the tips you know for how to prepare for placement interviews and get good internships and jobs super cool and I will try to iterate on this add more information and try to um, give this information to you in a very condensed manner which you can easily absorb and improve yourselves so to begin with i would like you to understand how hiring works so in today's world companies go to online portals like hackerank hacker earth i'm sure you have heard about that if not so this is how uh, hiring works ask your seniors in your college um how it works it has to work like this or code chef so what happens is that uh, let's have, let's talk about microsoft or maybe uh, goldman sachs so what they will do they will when they are coming to your college they will be having some four questions which are hosted on uh, hacker rank test or code chef test or hacker earth test and what happens is that all of you guys like 300 students will log into it and uh, with your own profiles you will try to solve those four coding interviews uh, coding interview questions and you will try to write code for that and then your code will be judged you will be given a verdict verdict as in whether your code is right whether your algorithm is correct or it's slow um whether it's giving wrong answer so <laughs> so that this is what happens in coding interview questions and once uh, that's over then comes the next part where they shortlist students they might uh, out of the 300 they might shortlist maybe around 20 of them 30 of them depends so after that uh, what happens is that you will be going through interviews and where they will again ask you uh, coding interview questions which are based on data structures and algorithms they might even ask you to write code on whiteboard or um, just write pseudo code and stuff like that so you should be really 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 proficient in data structures and algorithms and if you uh, have been following me for a while i have talked about this a lot many times and i'll be sharing the relevant links of my other videos where i have talked about all this stuff in the video descriptions you should not you know totally follow me you should hear to my ideas and then work on them because your situation i don't know no one knows you know the best so it's better if you take everything with a grain of salt and try to realize what's going on and then make decisions for yourself all right so again the complete story if you will see yeah your your internships everything is important you should do internships in second year third year um about second year i have also made a video about why or why not you should do internships check that out but your yeah, internships also are important because it gives you a sense of how the professional world is and it's it's a great addition to your resume so there are a lot of factors which are uh, playing part in your hiring process resume place part your projects and then most importantly most importantly i am again focusing on this a lot your data structures and algorithm skills guys that are very very important so um when you are in college to get started with uh, developing a strong sense of data structures and algorithms if you are a computer science student um you you have all the platform that you need but if you are not from computer science background you have to maintain your cgpa also because the companies will have a criteria that they won't like for adobe or flipkart they won't let people below 8 cgpa even sit for their coding interviews so meanwhile when you were trying to you know say that no i will just study data structures algorithms i won't do my branch because i have no interest i will just be a software engineer that can also be a problem you won't be able uh, even able to sit for uh, interviews and i have seen so uh, great coders like even adarsh kumar he has also gone through this stuff where the cgpa was like really creating problems but yeah he he is a real talent and he's doing well in life he is in google zurich now uh, i think munich yeah anyways so what i want to say is um don't let your cgpa fall very below like maintain maybe some 8 if you are having 8 it's well and good you are good to go so maintain your cgp and now you have 4 years 3 years 2 years i don't know but start off with competitive programming if you have time if you don't have time start off with 
geeks for geeks and interview bit okay again i'm repeating if you are having a lot of time start off with competitive programming there are many websites code forces code chef art coder hacker earth hacker rank a bunch of uh, websites you can s just google it or uh, watch the video description so there are so many websites uh, i would personally say don't get overwhelmed by going to all of them just start with code forces they are having very good platform i will quickly show you what it's about so in code forces um, you have your profile you give contest your rating increases decreases based on your performance there are online contests like there is one contest which is about to start in 30 minutes and over here in the recent actions there are many blog posts where people are discussing everything so if you are having some call uh, doubt also you can create a post over here so that's also again easy you can go to block entries and create a new post that's how it works um to uh, solve problems based on various topics like let's say you are you want to practice some greedy problems just select a tag of greedy sort this down so that uh, this is the easiest one and start solving problems here so once you are comfortable solving uh, problems on the first page you can go to next page which will be a little bit difficult because uh, this represents the number of people who have solved it and you can say with some strong correlation that if more people have solved it it will be a bit easier so that's why i have uh, sorted this in descending order which means start solving problems on whatever topics that you want like if you want to practice on binary search select the stack binary search and start solving problems so this is how you can uh, leverage the code forces platform to you know uh, select problems uh, start off and master that particular topic i have covered three tips uh, just from code forces that you can leverage to improve yourself as a coder and uh, clear your coding interviews so uh, again check out the video description for that and then uh, now i will be coming to what are the various data structures and algorithms which are important so let me just zoom in this okay so um in this blog post i have written some around 10 topics that you should uh, keep in mind so you should be very quick in implementation sometimes what happens is that um you know the concepts but uh, you're not familiar with the platform like what's hacker rank what is this what is the problem statement what is input constraint how do i have to you know print my output so be familiar with hacker rank and hacker earth all these platforms because the uh, the hiring works uh, in today's world it works like this only there will be contests hosted on hacker earth hacker rank and you will be uh, asked to solve it at that platform itself so be familiar with uh, various platforms i have also written practice questions on code forces hacker rank participate in contests do up solving again all those tips it's a very vast topic i have covered all three tips um, to improve yourself as a coder in a other video so refer to that there is a complete playlist for that coming back um you should be also quick in debugging because sometimes when you're doing coding and uh, you submit you think that it's right but you're getting wrong answer or something like that then you have to be really quick in debugging and finding out the mistake because it's not just that you are given infinite time to solve those problems you are having just one and a half hour or something like that so be really quick in debugging then uh, you should know the internals of the language like for c++ there is standard template library which is stl and it consists of sets maps and order set map vector and sorting algorithms and all those kind of things so you should know the internals of your language because if there is some question where you have to you know sort the array and then do some stuff with that and if you are writing code for merge sort in that time you are really wasting your time and your chances to crack that coding interview so you should be familiar with the internals of the particular language and for java they also have hash set and all those kind of things so you should really do practice so if you are having time i would again say start with competitive programming if not i would say go to geeks for geeks and interview bit really good platforms to um to practice a lot of problems and then um, be ready for your coding interviews so again coming back to the topics in data structures i will say you should know linked list stacks queues so i have i have missed linked list over here but again i am saying linked list is super important microsoft asks a lot of questions on linked list then stacks queues uh, sometimes binary index tree is also useful and sometimes segment trees is also useful so bit is very easy to code i can code it in just a minute or something and these are some good data structures that you should know and how you should implement and uh, you should know their implementation in your own language i know in c++ like then dynamic programming super 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 important um i can't stress how tricky dynamic programming can be and i'm glad that i'm having a complete uh, from zero to hero playlist for dynamic programming so check that out to be a master in dynamic programming and it's super important lot of questions come from here then coming to uh, i have again 
dynamic programming on trees um, this order is not right um, I would say DP on trees is very very important so after dynamic programming make sure to check this out also and then you should also uh, know about binary search trees binary trees and you know there are so many things that you can do with them like uh, finding if a given tree is uh, BST or not or um, you are given two BSTs and then you are asked to find out uh, one element from the first one and one element from the second one so that they sum up to give a resultant sum of capital S. Really standard questions and I have a coding interview problems playlist wherein I am trying to cover you know all the classic problems or all the problems that you should already know because they have some tricky solution to them or like really classic problems so uh, check that out it's a growing playlist that will surely help you and then you have greedy algorithms backtracking algorithms like you may be asked to solve a, a sudoku yeah that can happen or greedy algorithms are like uh, basically greedy problems can be very very tricky and you should know about that also this is not that much important i would say and then bit mask db is also not not that much important i would say but um, again there are so many important things graphs trees binary search trees linked lists stacks queues and um, date uh, segment trees and all these things so if you are having time computer programming will make sure that you know you will slowly and slowly in your journey of one to two years you will learn all these things otherwise head straight to geeks for geeks i will go there and then now you can see um, you have all everything like for linked lists there are many types of linked lists singly linked lists doubly linked lists circular linked lists and you have all questions over here pretty good platform they have um, they come uh, explain it also very in a good way description of the problem and then the code is also there so that's good so if you want to you know practice in detail you can go to geeks for geeks to just get around how it works what are the different type of questions which might arise on specific topics and if you want to le leverage code forces i have told you again um, if you can select tags and all problems will be filtered on that and then you can solve so um, these were the some important topics that you should uh, know i would say segment trees are not that important you can leave it for now cover the rest and then you can come back again in graphs don't worry about dijkstra and flows they are rarely asked not that important traversals on uh, trees and graphs are super important and dp on trees is again a very good topic it can be asked so um, if if you are good in programming don't uh, just you know waste your time in dijkstra and segment trees i would say first master your speed and uh, how quickly you can think about the solution how quickly you can uh, code it um, are you writing code uh, bug free code and all these things improve on that and once you think that you are you are really good and you know your the solution is coming to you like very quickly and you are able to code it out very quickly then i would say move on to dijkstra and segment trees and stuff like that so i hope this problem helped you a lot and i will also edit my blog post over here so that you can refer it to find the exact list of topics that are important and that are not and i will see you next time all right bye bye